I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R410 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. I just want a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R410 server. Do us a favor if you find anything that helps you in this video. Click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on the Dell PowerEdge R410 and going to be specifically focused on solid state drives. So here's what we're going to do in this video as a whole is we're going to show you the different compatible types of solid state drives for your 11th gen server. We're going to show you the max speeds, the max sizes. We're going to show you how to actually physically install one, which is super easy because it's a hot swap drive. We're going to show you you uh, how to uh, test at the very end with a tool called HD Sentinel. Uh, what we actually do is we will plug in a storage array to our server uh, and we'll actually test it separately standalone. Uh, and we'll run HD Sentinel just to let you know the power on hours and the health score. So it's a nice test outside of Dell Diagnostic, which is a great test as well. And the two tests that I would recommend to test your SSDs, especially if you're buying a used one or if you just want to verify that you have a new one that has uh, no power on hours as a whole. So, all right, well, let's, uh, let's hop in. The uh, compatible types of solid state drives are going to be SAS and SATA. Now there's some advantages with SATA over SAS and that's specifically, or excuse me, with SAS over SATA and that's specifically the speed. Now there, I guess there are some advantages for SATA over SAS that it's cheaper. So depending on what you want, if you want the extra speed, it'll cost more um, and you're going to pay a little bit more for the SAS, but let's get into the speed. So with a SATA solid state drive, you can get three gigabit per second and that's going to be the max that it will top out with your 11th gen server. Whereas with a SAS solid state drive, you can get six gigabit per second and that's again going to be uh, SAS only and that's for your 11th gen server. Now the uh, max sizes that you can get will be the same uh, either way whether it's SAS or SATA and you can put 7.68 terabytes per individual uh, drive slot so that's pretty nice storage overall. Now I'm going to show you how to install it and then show you how to test it with HD Sentinel. All right, have my EST gear on, safe to work on our R410 server. So this is going to be an easy upgrade, as we mentioned overall. It's a hot swap machine, which I will note there are R410s which are cabled in, and you would still be able to install a 2.5-inch uh, SSD. Uh, it would be screwed in as opposed to what we're about to show you. Uh, and we have on our website the option where if you do have a hot swap, and because this is a large form factor drive, you will need the tray plus this adapter or this converter, which will allow you to put a 2.5 inch SSD into your R410, okay? So to remove your old drive, you're just gonna pop the latch via this red circle here, and you're just gonna slide this out. And after you slide this out, we're gonna install our new drive, okay? So the, the best way to do that is to just go ahead and pop your latch open to start, slide this in. It will get caught here every once in a while, but just slide it in and push it in, and once you do, you just latch it in with uh, making sure it's all the way and just close the, the tray. It's honestly a very, very simple installation overall. It's one of the easiest installations that you can do. And one of the things that we always recommend if you want to boost the performance on an older server like the R410, really the best thing you can do is upgrade your RAM, upgrade your SSDs, and that will uh, be a significant boost in performance overall. So as you can see, that was a very easy installation as a whole. And if you run into trouble, please reach out to our team uh, support at cloudengine.com or sales at cloudengine.com and we can definitely help you out. And uh, now what we're going to show you how to do is actually test your SSDs with Dell Diagnostics. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen but you just want to go ahead and press yes and it'll take a little bit of a second to load but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. 
So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's gonna be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue, or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning, but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been, you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.